Welcome to the Team Lawson channel. I'm Teresa. I'm Mike. And, and we're millennials, millennials and we're making it. On our channel, we discuss all things that meet within the intersection of millennial marriage and special needs parenting. We want to create a community that's both inclusive and encouraging. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Help us reach our goal to get to 1,000 subscribers before we reach the end of the year. We also smash that like button so that you can let the algorithm know you think we are awesome. So today... We've been transitioning, and that means so, I, so has our child. What was that? <laughs> so I ain't little bitty. Um, but um, our just, it's not like our schedules have been changing. Um, Macy's about to start school again. We have some other stuff that we're getting into. And so it has meant great upheaval in schedule. For any kid that has a lot, mm -hmm. or an autistic, autistic kid, it can be traumatic. So we're going to talk about some tips today to help um, kids, uh, especially kids with special needs, with major changes and some of the things that we have been doing. So, want to talk about what's going on with Macy first here recently? She ain't been asleep. And this has been all summer. And it's several things. Part of it is her school schedule is a whole lot more relaxed. And so she um didn't have to get up as early so she was going to bed a little later that was our bad then we got sick she was sick for several weeks a lot of those days she was really sick and she was sleeping in the bed with us and then she was just like this is my bed now <laughs> that on top of the fact that she really was having a hard she instantly was having a hard time Sleeping, so it's just like, well, I'm not being here by myself. I'm coming in here with y'all. Mm. Be in the dark, and I got two whole parents downstairs who love me. Um, and then you know, because um, she is not sleeping, that is increased behaviors. And like, she has some new ones that are. Hmm, sweet Jesus, it's a lot. It's a lot, um, and so we've been trying to manage through that, but in managing through that, we are trying to help her manage some very big feelings that she's having about everything changing. And then two, at the school and therapy center that she's at, they've had a lot of um, people changes. I, don't, I wouldn't call it necessarily job turnover, because these are people that have been here forever. They've been with Macy. Come on now, Michael. Don't oh, hurry, hurry. They've been with Macy <laughs> since she's been at the Murray Center, and they're not there anymore. And it was one, like, last year, and now it's like all of them. All the people that she loves dear, dearly. Probably still got a few, though. Yeah. yeah. Probably still got a few. Yeah, there are a couple of texts that are still there. Um, one of them left, and I didn't even know it. I'll have to show you a picture. I don't think you remember her name. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I was just like, oh, you got a whole new job now? You ain't tell nobody? Mm. But, like, Macy goes to school for the adults. She doesn't go to learn. She goes to have fun and to play with the adults, not the kids. Whatever. Um, and so it was. A, it's a really big deal for her. Like, pretty much every time I take her to school, like, I have to be like, hey, you know, so and so's not gonna be there anymore. And she, the Monday when I dropped her for therapy, I'm gonna go see so and so. You remember how I said they weren't gonna be there, and I've been telling you that for the past two weeks. Well, this is the day they're not gonna be there. Mm. Like the last time you saw them, and she came and gave you a big hug. Like that, that was that was why. Mm. She didn't believe me until she got back in the car, and the next day she didn't want to go there. Mm. <laughs> I feel so bad. Oh, being glad I can't remember her name. I think Ashlyn. Oh, why well, be saying this people name? Her parents probably not Ashlyn anyway. But she came and got out of the car and she was holding on to my neck. And I was like, she's a little nervous. So and so's not here and she misses her people. And so like I'm patting my baby, trying to explain to her, it's okay. You're gonna have fun. 
Mm-hmm. I know that you love your people. It's so sad. Mm-hmm. How'd she do today when you drove her off? Mm-hmm. She did her. Did she go out the car? Yeah, she got her. She's acting funny, though. Yeah. Who came and got her, you know? Nope. Young, know young white lady and black lady. What? Worth glasses? No, she had no glasses on. I knew something about um, but yeah, so it wasn't, never mind. I'm, I'm not saying anybody else's name in this video, you know but people name. yeah. And so she's not just dealing with like schedule changes, but she's having really big feelings, really big emotional changes. And so here are some ways to help your babies deal with it. Um, going to a new class, oh, going to a new school. I am not ready for that fight. Yes, mm. Lord. Um, but here's some things to help it not be such a fight. As always, I'll put links down below, but I might forget. Love y'all. Um, this is from raisingchildren.net.au. So this is an Australian website, but it's been helpful. And the kudos to Australia. A lot of the autism, like parenting things that I find come from Australia and Canada. What are we doing, U.S.? um social stories so i told michael we were gonna have to make some if you don't know what a social story is let me change your life because i didn't know before i had a child with special needs and i was like this could have helped me as a child Mm -hmm. because i had so much anxiety about school when school started but what you do is like you create a story with your kid in it and you make like a children's book Literally, you could do it on PowerPoint. You could um, print it out and like make it to a physical book, or you could just like draw a book, which is always fun. I think that's what I'm gonna do for one of them. And so for the major things that are going on in your kid's life, like we had one for starting school after COVID, like everybody's gonna have on a mask and you have to wash your hands more. And there still be fun things. It's literally a children's story. Um, and I'll try to, if I remember, put some links down below of places where you can make digital social stories. They have a couple of apps. I haven't found one that was really easy to use. If you know of one that's easy to use, please put it down below because it would be helpful because I'm really, I, there are two social stories that I'm going to have to do. Um, and then maybe three, but definitely two. One about school, one about some life changes that are happening with us. But yeah, and so like you sit down, you read books to your kid, you sit down and read the book of the social story with them and you give them a chance to practice. I feel like something like a piece of hair is stuck. Yeah, it was. You give them a chance to practice and rehearse. You tell them about the feelings they might feel and how it's okay to feel those feelings. Jeez, I'm telling you, all this stuff would have helped me as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, you give the, and when they're having a hard time, you can actually pull out the book and the social story and see, see how we talked about this and how you might feel like this. And here are some things that you can do when you're feeling that way. And here's who you can go talk to if at school you're scared or you're worried, you know? that is so helpful like social stories are so amazingly helpful you literally come up with this story for the situation that your kid is about to go through the problems they might have the feelings they might feel and ways that they can cope with it and then you read it to them every day multiple times a day you point out when you're like facing like something that's in the story how have you found social stories helpful in the past for Macy? Or have you found them helpful? Uh, it, it, yeah, I found them helpful. I mean, it's helping her to understand, you know, what's going on. Instead, because I don't know if she, you know, would full understand if you just came out and told her, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, and so, like, most people aren't auditory learners. Nope. Most people aren't. Like, if you tell me the instructions to do something complicated... Like, I'm probably going to remember the first and the last thing you said and have to figure out somewhere in the middle or just constantly have to act. I ain't trying to remember. Write it down. (laughs) Right. And so that helps you cover all the points. It helps them get all the points. I remember the social story that they gave us for, um, they did one for, they were building Macy's school and so they they were temporarily in another building, which was a big deal for kids especially who had been in the building they had been in for years and children with autism just period like transition is hard 
and that social story was so helpful. Mm. Um, she all they also did a social story, just like a mini like social story, for she was having a really hard time that year with her kids leaving the classroom, her mm. her classmates leaving the classroom. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. because when you're in a special education classroom, like the children there will have therapy, pull out therapy throughout the day, and like you probably remember if you went to public school like kids getting pulled out for speech or kids getting pulled out for not so much OT it's usually just speech um but like this is all day every day like the class is set up and the class size is created in the understanding that very seldomly will all these kids be in the classroom at the same time all the time usually around lunch and recess they're like all together and throughout the day like two or one's here one's here another one's here and so macy has three different therapies and so do all the other kids at the school usually um three different therapies and so everybody was getting pulled out and taken somewhere else and i don't know if it was because she had to stay in the classroom and do and she was doing more work than she normally did or if it was because they were in a new building and she was uncomfortable with where they were going because she is quite protective of her people. Um, but like she was she was getting mad, screaming, <laughs> hollering. I was at a meeting with the principal and um, uh, the principal and the director for not the merge center, but who does like the event planning and stuff. I can't remember. She's not an event planner. I can't remember her official position, but we were in the principal's office. I do PTO stuff. We were in the principal's office next to Macy's classroom, and she was having all these troubles. They pulled somebody out of the classroom. I heard Macy scream. Mm. And you know you know your child scream. I heard Macy scream and run to the back of the classroom and run to the front. I'm like, oh, that kid's having a hard time. Yeah, that's my kid. Mm. <laughs> that's That's Macy. <laughs> But they created a social story for her for that. Um, it was pretty helpful. And then we had the pandemic and they had to do another social story for that. It was a lot that year. Okay. Timetable. So like literally coming up with a visual schedule and it could be like for Macy, an actual like time would not be helpful. Like doing like nine o'clock and 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Like, time, telling time is something that she is still learning. But, like, having, like, things in order, like, pictures in order. We've had some, like, picture schedules before where, like, there's a picture for getting up and getting dressed and a picture for getting in the car and going to school and a picture for having lunch. And, like, as you do those things, you pull the picture off. Mm. Those are really nice. Um, but just something, a visual schedule representation of what they're going to be doing at each part of the day. Um, and so, like, they know, like, how much time they have. Even if it's just, even if it's not tangibly how much time, but, like, what comes next and follows, that is helpful for me. So we haven't done one of those in a while, but I think we might have to do that. Um, because she will technically have two schedules. She'll have her school schedule and she'll have her travel schedule. School travel, I don't know how this, school travel, yeah. And so, yeah, that might be helpful. I think she still got the bathroom. Yeah, she still has the bathroom one. She doesn't use that so much anymore. What we really need one is for, because the bathroom one, it did its job. It was for, like, the steps and going to the bathroom. Oh, so helpful. So you go in the bathroom and you pull down your pads and you pull down your underwear and you sit on the toilet. Then you wipe. Then you flush the toilet. Then you pull up your underwear. <laughs> like it was that detailed. But she needs one more for hand washing, I think. Like, she knows how to wash her hands. She knows how to wash her hands, but I have seen Macy. She was going there put her hands no, in the water. No, no, no. I, no, no. She, I've seen her, intent, not intentionally, but I be, I've be, seen her be intentional about washing her hands, but just get the steps out of order. So she'll run water on her hands, draw her hands off, and then put soap on it and rub it together and walk out. Mm. It's like, wait, you got it backwards, babe. You got it backwards. So I think that would be helpful. But any sort of visual schedule to help your kid along with the things that are going on, especially if they're you're in a um, season where their schedule looks different every day, 
they can they can know what the pictures are for those things of the schedule uh, and also put on there when they're going to be with you because I think the biggest thing for Macy and probably most kids is when do I get to go home and be with my mama and daddy when is daddy coming home from work when is mama coming home and so those that's I think I think sometimes we parents take for granted how stabilizing just their presence is even if you're just cooking dinner and telling them it's time to take a bath like the presence of you being there is so important it's worth putting on the schedule so they know that that's coming too this is one that i've had to remind myself of many many times because i'm one that get, has a schedule for everything in my head and I don't communicate it and I get mad when people are behind on the schedule but like kids need extra time yeah. right and so just you know if you're getting out of the door like if it takes 15 minutes to get dressed planned for it to take 30 you know if it takes um 20 minutes to um, put on shoes and grab backpack and get to the car and buckle up and all that good stuff. Plan for about 30 or 40 because there may be a meltdown. Um, you may not be able to find shoes. Like with all of the things that are going on, time should not be the factor whether or not your child is successful that day. Mm. Yes? No? Um, timers and small changes. So look, Macy does not do well with timers. Like digital timers make her want to like little beep beep ones make her lose her mind. And so that, hmm. that's one that you can have tried on your kid. But like giving them time and giving them timers lets them know when the time that you have given them is going to come to an end so they know how much time. Now what we can do with Macy is 10 more minutes, seven more minutes, five more minutes. Um, she understands the countdown and that time is going to be in the end. So that is helpful for her. And then this is not something that you can always do, but like small changes changing a little bit at a time and like life sometimes life throws big changes at you and so it changes very very quickly you may not be able to do that but if you can change things incrementally like not add everything to the schedule at once um you know what do you think would be most helpful for macy right now keeping her attention man because she when you're trying to show her this stuff, man, her mind just, you know. She well, be, she is ADHD. I know, so. I know, I know. But I, I just, you know, and that's going to be the hard part, just mm -hmm. getting her to stay focused and paying attention to what we're trying to show her, you know. Because mm -hmm. doing the visual schedule does no good if she won't look yeah, at the you're visual not looking schedule. At, you, know, <laughs> you, you worry about your tablet or your, your, your doctor bag, your play mm -hmm. doctor bag, while I'm trying to be like, hey, let me show you how to wash your hands, you know. I think that'll be most helpful for her right now. Is just focus and paying attention, even though it's hard because she got ADHD. It is, but I think if we can help get help her, you know, get some kind of control over it, she'll be all right. Or manage it. I yeah. Know, maybe control over. Well, yeah, it. manage it. You know, I think she'll be all right. Anything yeah. else? No. I feel like I did a lot of talking in this one. You did. <laughs> you good to know, but that's that's you know I'm not I'm not knocking that. I mean you giving information that people need. Well, you so. can talk in the next one. Maybe it's fine. You good? Mm. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and listening to me talk so much. We'll see you in the next video. Stop doing, girl. You're fine. God bless you.